Lightning makes your models hardware agnostic. This means that you can train on a single GPU, multiple GPUs, or many GPUs spread out across a lot of machines. In the distributed computing world, a single machine is called a node. And if you wanted to train on something like 32 GPUs, and you had each machine with eight GPUs, then you would have four nodes. To train across multiple nodes, you can set the num nodes flag. Let's say that you want to train a model, and on a single GPU, it's going to take four days. If you were to use two GPUs, you could get that time down to two days. But if you wanted to train in about an hour and a half, you would have to use 64 GPUs. Unfortunately, there's no machine that has 64 GPUs on it. So you have to use multiple machines. So in your cluster, you may have many machines where each machine has eight GPUs. In that case, you would want to use eight nodes or eight machines where each machine has eight GPUs. In that setting, you would want to set GPUs equals eight and number of nodes equals eight. Your effective batch size is the batch size of your data loader times the number of GPUs times the number of nodes. So in our case, if we use a batch size of 32 and we use number of GPUs eight and number of nodes eight, so your effective batch size is going to end up being 2048. There are many algorithms on how to distribute computations and sync gradients across all these GPUs. Lightning offers many options. The default one is distributed data parallel, which is implemented by PyTorch and we abbreviate as DDP. Here's a quick summary of DDP. Every single GPU across every machine will get a copy of the model and a subset of the data. In our example, we're going to get 1 64th of our data set allocated to each GPU. That GPU will only ever see that 1 64th. The model will train to a forward and backward pass, and then it will sync the gradients across all the GPUs in the world. In our example, the world size equals 64, which is the number of GPUs times the number of nodes. Once every process has synced all the gradients and average, then all the optimizers in each individual GPU will update the weights. It is very important in DDP that you set the seed because each process will instantiate its own individual copy of the model. And if the seed is different, the model weights will all be different. DDP is the fastest and recommended way of doing training, but you can pass in a different distributed backend flag to Lightning to use a different approach. When you're using DDP under the hood, it's going to call a Python process individually, which means you can't really use this in a Colab, Jupyter Notebook, or anywhere where you have a nested script without a root package. You also can't use this if your script invokes fit or test multiple times. In these cases, you can use DDP spawn. DDP spawn works exactly like DDP, but instead of calling a Python script under the hood, it spawns up different processes using dot spawn. Dot spawn will use the multi-processing library to spin up sub-processes from your main process, which is running your current model. The downside of doing this is that in Python, spawn pickles all of your model and everything you've passed into it and saves it to disk and then reconstructs it in the subprocess. So if your model has something that is not applicable, you will crash. Because you're spitting a subprocess, this is not compatible with setting num workers more than zero in data loaders. This will bottleneck your training. It will make everything very, very slow. This is a limitation of PyTorch and Python. And finally, because you spawn subprocesses, the model in the original process will not be updated. Whenever you can, use DDP because it is at least 3x faster. As I mentioned, there are a few cases where DDP is not supported. In addition, DDP is not supported in Windows. If you want to use multiple GPUs in these settings, you can actually use Data Parallel. Data Parallel is not recommended by PyTorch or PyTorch Lightning, but if you have no other option, then DDP is a great option to speed up your training. The first thing DP does is it copies a model into each GPU. The next thing that it does is that it takes half of the batch and moves it to the first GPU and then the second to the second GPU. Then in parallel, they're processed through the model during the forward pass and the outputs are aggregated back on the main process. Then the outputs are synced back to the original GPU where a backward pass is performed and then the model is updated. On the next pass, it's going to copy the model again. And this is why DP is very slow, because it transfers data across GPUs three times. There's another mode that we've implemented at Lightning called DDP2. And this is super useful if you're working with contrastive learning or anything with negative samples. In this case, it's a mixture of DP and DDP. So on a single machine, it's going to work like DP, where it's going to split the batch across the GPUs. And then across machines, it's going to sync gradients like in DDP. This way, you can use all of the outputs of each GPU in the denominator of something like a softmax. It is extremely difficult to debug multi-GPU and multi-node training, which is why we spend a lot of time obsessing over it. So we've done a lot of the groundwork for you, but 
there are some cases where you still need to debug your own model to make sure that your competitions are correct. In this case, we provide a backend called DDP underscore CPU, where you can actually simulate DDP in your own CPU machine. This is not going to make your model actually train faster because PyTorch already uses all resources and all CPUs in that machine. To use this, set distributed backend equals to DDP underscore CPU, and then the number of processes to the number of GPUs that you'd want to simulate. 